Hey, what's going on guys? Aaron here. Welcome to the video. So in this video, I'm going to talk about how much money the litigation administrator has brought back into their account, which will be distributed to the creditors to yourself. I'm going to talk about possibly the timeline of when we'll get to the second distribution, how much percent of our claim that may be based upon how much money that account has and how much money they have brought back from all sorts of activities, which I will cover. But I first want to touch on some drama or some criticism from the customer base about Ionic Digital. So I want to start out with this letter that Tony wrote to the judge a few days ago. Tony is a creditor, and then I'm going to cover some other kind of updates with Ionic Digital and what could possibly happen down the road for that. After that, I'll get into our second distribution, how much it'll be, and all the numbers and everything about that in just a moment. So Tony starts out basically saying that creditors need an immediate update on the efforts to register the shares with the SEC. So Ionic is in talks with registering, but nothing really has gotten done, at least no communication, right? zero transparency, reminding people that Ionic was capitalized with $225 million in cash. Now that is cash that had Ionic not gone through or the mining co not been approved, that 225 million would have hypothetically come back to us creditors. And 225 million would be around four and a half percent or so of additional recovery. I'll get to the numbers again a little bit later in this video. He then says that shareholders, meaning the customers, have received no information about the progress of the company since its launch in February, the status of the Form 10, or the NASDAQ listing for Ionic Digital. And there's some drama happening, basically. The initial CFO, Joel Block, is no longer with the company. His replacement, Stuart, was also subsequently replaced on July 11th by a man named John Penver. In addition, there has been an alarming amount of turnover at the Ionic Digital Board of Directors. Two independent board members, Max Holmes and Fred Arnold, resigned. And there are some other kind of drama things happening behind the scenes as well. Also, we have Asher Ganut of HUD8, HUD8 being the plan sponsor. Asher is currently sitting on the board of Ionic Digital, while simultaneously serving as the CEO and board member of HUT8. It is unknown how Asher can remain on the board while maintaining a director role at one of Ionic's primary competitors in the Bitcoin mining space. Great question. So there are other rumors as well, but basically Tony is saying that these rumors can be easily dispelled by giving shareholders an update on operations. So he is requesting the judge to require Ionic and the plan sponsor to provide adequate disclosure within five business days. If we cannot be provided with answers through this request, Tony says, our only other remedy would be to use the proxy rules afforded to shareholders. And how I understand that is that customers are the shareholders and shareholders have the ability to make changes with the company. I don't know exactly what that would look like, but possibly wind it down, sell everything, get out of it maybe get a new board of directors, maybe get a new CEO. So basically using the customer base to take some action here. Simon Dixon says, looks like we have confirmation of problems at Ionic Digital. So Brett Perry, who is a board observer, says, fellow Ionic shareholders, you've been kept in the dark too long. Let Judge Glenn and the press know. I'll ensure your voices are heard by the board and management. Reject the misuse of our money as a personal piggy bank and lack of respect shown to us all. So that's a big deal. That's a really big deal. Next, we have an account on Twitter saying it may not even be possible for them to go public because there isn't even a company with two years of audited financials, right? So there's that issue as well, which I've heard before. Here, Rupee on Twitter says, can you please stop with the silent treatment and be transparent to your investors, right? So I'll include this page right here. If you would like to personally send the court or send the judge a letter, if that's something you want to do. So I wanted to start out with that because that is the main thing or other than getting a second payout, which I'll talk about in just a second. That is kind of the main thing that people want to know about, like what is going on. So I'm going to go through this litigation administrators quarterly report here talking about all of the money they have brought back into the account 
talking about the next time they expect to give a distribution. And they also talk about other litigations they're in. And I'm going to go over all of that in just a moment. But before I do that, I actually want to transition into a new channel partnership that I'm super excited to talk about, which is Mint Mobile. And the reason that I wanted to work with Mint is because they are incredibly affordable. Right now, the market's going through some crazy times. A lot of people need to save money in various ways, or that would be really, really great. So one thing I like about Mint is they offer premium wireless for $15 a month, which right now I'm with another provider and oh my gosh, it's a lot, right? It's a lot. So with Mint Mobile, you can get high-speed internet and unlimited talk and text to everything you expect on one of the nation's largest networks. And you can even bring your own phone because most phones these days use eSIMs. So within 15 minutes, you can actually transfer your service from wherever you're at now to Mint Mobile. So full transparency, I'm in the process of getting a phone and personally testing out their service. And what people are sharing online is that there is no distinguishable difference really between Mint Mobile and the big name carriers. Right here for new customers, they're offering this three month plan for $15 a month. And again, you can get a physical SIM shipped to you or you can get an eSIM. And within a matter of 15 minutes, you can get Mint Mobile on your phone. So if this is something that interests you, you can go to my link, which is going to be at the top of the video description. Once I get it, I will definitely make an updated video on my experience with it. But I just wanted to let you know they are partnering with this video and I'm really excited about that. So let's dive in to this document right here. And I made a lot of notes here going over the amount of dollars and what percent that would be of our claim that we will be getting back in the future. So they start out by saying that the litigation administrators brought back and generated around $123 million of cash. So the balance, which I'll get to in just a moment, is approximately $181.4 million. Here talking about the initial distribution. So they expect to do that before the first anniversary of the effective date. So that would be before July 31st of next year. And likely, which is good, likely in the fourth quarter of 2024. My guess though, is they're gonna have to get everybody their initial distribution first. There are still a lot of people who have not gotten their initial distribution, which is absolutely insane. So that will have to be completed first. These numbers are gonna have to be 99% or 100% of value distributed before I believe they will give a second distribution. So this is the chart they gave. So this account started with $55 million. We funded the litigation oversight committee with 55 million bucks. Now, this was used to go after people for clawbacks or otherwise known as avoidance actions. And so far they got back 71, almost $72 million, also monetizing some illiquid assets and doing other types of things in the portfolio. That's $75 million back so far. Also interest income. I assume that's just money sitting in a bank account collecting four and a half percent like a lot of people are these days which is nice so we got 1.3 million dollars from that after we paid the litigation administrators the litigation oversight committee professional fees which was 19.6 million bucks we're still up 126 million dollars so in total in total this account right now has 181.3 million dollars so what does all this money mean well Let's break it down. I want to talk a little bit about Ionic Digital, the stock, to start out, just to kind of give you some context. So the creditors funded Ionic Digital with $225 million. So that would be around a 4.5% recovery if hypothetically Ionic Digital went bankrupt or unwound because we funded that company with $225 million we don't know how much money they've spent. We don't really know anything about that, but I just wanted to start with that. I started the video talking about Ionic and we don't know what'll happen. Maybe they'll launch with the SEC and get listed on NASDAQ, or maybe something else will happen, but there is still a solid amount of cash that they essentially started with. And 225 million 
again, would be around an additional 4.5% recovery to everybody's claim, right? From several months ago, they shared this $165 million in priority admin claims and they could use it for emergencies. There isn't any update on what that money has or has not been used for, but if all of that comes back to us, that would be an additional 3.3%. And they shared publicly in the plan that there'd be about 6.4% back in illiquid assets. So these are just some numbers that I think a lot of people wanna see. Okay, if mining goes belly up, that's around four, maybe 5% back. We may get back another three for some weird fund they had, but right here, this litigation recovery account. So this account right here, the ending cash balance, $181.3 million. So that would be approximately 3.7% back. Now these numbers could be a little off. This is me using the existing numbers, basically giving Ionic digital evaluation of $740 million, which would equate to 14.9% back. So keeping that as the benchmark, all of these other dollar figures result in these percentages approximately. So if this litigation recovery account were to completely dissolve, which it's not because they're still going after people, which I'll get to in just a moment, we would get back an additional 3.7% here. So $627 million were held back, which is quite a lot of money. Now, not all of this will be coming back to us. 429 million was the withdrawal preference exposure. So as those are getting solved and resolved, I should say, some of this money will be coming back to us. So still a lot of question marks on how much of these reserves will be coming back. So let's go back to this document. So. Some more updates here, avoidance action settlements. So, so far there have been around 1600 settlements and approximately $88 million has been sent into this account or so. So it's a little bit less here. They give a reason why there's $15.7 million less, but again, around $88 million came back. Now, as of July 15th, the litigation administrator filed nearly 2,500 adversary proceedings against certain people or parties that did not settle, seeking the return of crypto worth in excess of $2 billion as of June 14th. So I don't believe that $2 billion is going to come back. Of course not. The litigation administrator is trying to or essentially creating adversary proceedings to get the money back as of June 14th prices, which ironically is higher than the price it is right now. So when this goes to litigation or when this goes to some sort of streamlined process to deal with all of these lawsuits or adversary proceedings, it's gonna be a lot less than $2 billion that comes back. So we don't really know what's gonna happen. That is ongoing. And if you're in that group, um, a lot of you guys are talking to me, so I kind of know what's going on, but a lot of people working with lawyers have signed NDAs, so I actually don't know exactly what's happening anymore. So anyway, that's that. But continuing on, these are the litigations that most people are in support of, right? So here we have one against Mashinsky. Cool. Seeking the avoidance of nearly $90 million. We don't know how much will come back, but that is a lot of money. The litigation administrator also filed five complaints against Celsius employees who sold significant amounts of sell token through its OTC over-the-counter trading desk. So next with FTX, we are, or the litigation administrator, is pursuing over $400 million in avoidance action claims against FTX. So we have no idea how successful these will be. And these could take a long time to play out. So there's litigation against Kefi, a couple million dollars against Fabric Ventures we're trying to get back, suing Badger Dow for a loss of approximately $50 million, and then suing Bancor for $7 million of losses, another $3 million case here. They're also looking to sue Three Arrows Capital for over 40 million dollars so far nothing has come from that and they liquidated certain illiquid assets brought in 4.2 million dollars and they also generated another 41 million dollars as well so this all falls under the illiquid assets bucket so the illiquid asset bucket is right here this is a chart that 
a lot of you guys have seen, but this is where it breaks down our recovery. So the illiquid asset recovery is supposed to be around 6.4%. So that's around 350 or so, just off the top of my head, million dollars they expect to bring back. And it looks like they brought back somewhere in the ballpark of like 75 to 80 so far. So still a lot more money that they expect to bring back. So to be specific, actually, <laughs> liquid assets, 6.4%, that's $305 million. And yeah, so far they liquidated around 74. So that's only one and a half percent. So another 5% should be coming over the next couple, I don't know, months or years. Again, we have about a 3.7% recovery that's sitting in the litigation recovery account. So that would mean right now they have around five and a quarter percent or so, but they're not going to just disperse this $181 million because again, they're still going after people and institutions and Mashinsky and FTX and all of those litigations that I just covered. So if I had to just guess, I'm going to guess that this first distribution would be between three to 5% back, which isn't really that much. It's something, but it's nothing amazing. That's my guess right now. And then we're going to get more over the next literal couple years. So I don't know if it'll be less than 3%. Maybe it'll be closer to 7 or 8%. I really don't know. But if I had to guess, it'll be that 4 to 5 to 6% range that we would get back in the first distribution Q4 of this year or latest before January 31st of next year. So that's basically it for the video, guys. Just want to keep you guys up to date and let you guys know what's going on. I would love if everybody in Celsius got back 100% of their claim, like what is happening with BlockFi. That would be amazing. I really hope there's a possibility or there's a reality where that happens. For that to happen, we would need to win massive lawsuits against Three Arrows Capital, which may or may not have enough money to pay us, equities first, also with FTX and other major players where we would get preferable judgments in, I guess, the bankruptcy court or through a settlement. So we'll see what happens. A lot of people just want to never hear about Celsius again, but unless you sold your claim, you will be hearing about Celsius as money trickles in literally over the next couple years. So for better or worse, you can't just completely delete Celsius from your brain. So that is it for the video, guys. Again, if you want to check out Mint Mobile and check out their service and what they have to offer, you can use my link in the description below. Hope you guys are doing well. Till next time, talk with you soon and bye for now.